Hey there, Boots Owen here. Another one, the third I've had in my possession. Started with a four slice white end, which I have in my kitchen to date. Then I got a silver, I think it was, three slice out of a skip. And I put all new elements into the three slice, I think. This one, you see my face? It's there somewhere. I don't know, you make me thick or thin, depending on what way I turn. Two slice. I was bought it, I think it cost five or three, some price like that at a car boot sale. It looks okay, definitely used. Got a few crumbs in it. I was told it was working. If that's the case, we're good. One to two slices. Let's get a bit of power here and plug it in. Power supply. I think I've tested it insofar as it, the, light, the light comes on. All right. And it does come on again. I put on one slice and see what happens. I hear a crackling, but they do that. And it burst into flames. But heat. Feels hot. I think the middle element also comes on whenever you heat these things, which is kind of a peculiarity of them. Let's put on the second one. Yeah, there's definitely a bit more sizzle action there off the mica sheet. I don't know, can you see that? The sheet on the right here. So what we'll do is we'll get into it and we'll just test the elements with a continuity meter, I think. Continuity tester, resistance meter, ohm meter, whichever one of these things you want to call it. Hot, hot. It feels pretty hot. The reason I've got doubt is because the guy who sold it to me said sometimes, sometimes maybe one, one of the sides of slices doesn't get hot. I don't know if that's true or not. I have some sheets from another jewelet. I believe these may be genuine. Yeah, that one. Maybe these are genuine sheets second hand when I did one of the toasters presumably the three slice because I've got four sheets here these came with it genuine plug never been attacked I don't think I've been into a jewelet plug to see what's going on I don't know what the point of putting a tamper proof thing is other than you'll know if someone's been at the fuse the sides aren't hot how do I get in here do I remember I went to the bottom this one has been hand-built in Great Britain by Michael. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jewelet in West Sussex, Crawley. Now, there's six screws to get in. In this case, strangely, three of the feet, let's have a look. Three of the feet are roundy. Foot number four is hexagonal. Nothing, nothing other than that, that is interesting in itself. So let's get in and see what test I can perform here. It is disconnected from the power. The fact that I'm looking at a jewelet again prompts the discussion about jewelets. Jewelets, there's some toast crumbs, I have to give that a clean. Sharp edge on that. Jewelets are incredibly expensive. As toasters go, they're 120, 200, I don't know, some crazy price. These ones come in two up to eight slices, I believe. Is that bar there made of copper? See that bar going across? Couldn't be made of copper, could it? Oh, it could be. It looks to be copper colored. It's great heat out of this thing. Um, I'm gonna get the infrared thermometer. I'll get the thermometer and just see if these different panels are hot. So the one on the right, 104, 103. The one on the left, 113. The one in the center, 108. On the other side of it, 199, something like that. I would say that that is working A-OK. -okay. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that. Now, what can we check here, continuity-wise? Let's give it some resistance. It's not hot enough to, to worry about perching that up there, right? Um, 
with my hand here and here. Forty two point six. That should fluctuate as it cools down. This side should be the same. Forty three point five. And the one in the center. Hmm, 42.8. Now I wonder, because they're coupled together, uh, this side is the neutral coupled and the live here and here are coupled. So that's your one slice, which is permanently coupled. And then over here, it's not coupled. Can, does that make sense? Can we get in a bit closer? So you've got two lives coming in. One goes to here, which also goes to here because it's connected with this brass piece. This one is separate. So if it's onto two slices, you can't see the resistance reading now, but that's connected. So if it's onto two slices, these two should have a continuity across the switch. One less than one ohm. These two are always connected. So short of actually disconnecting them all is there a way to test it all other than like i've tested it by heating it and i'm convinced that it's working that is a start is it worth my while to disconnect those bus bars to check hmm i don't know if it is but what i can do just for funsies is describe to you how you would replace the element Well, I can do a few things actually. So, looking in here from below, you've taken off six screws to get in. In here, there's two brass nuts, one there and one there. And this is the same for a two, three, four, five slice, whatever. Well, I don't know if they have a five, six or eight slice. Loosen off the two nuts and slide this piece of metal here, this little sheet, towards the, the bottom of the screen. That means that you can pull up these sheets once you've released the wires. So you just unscrew the wires and the little bus bars, a screw and a nut driver. It's tricky because they're in the way kind of, but you you know, it'll just fall out the bottom. It's not, you're not going to lose the parts or anything. Remember how it looks, put it all back together with new elements and then slide this bar up, this little piece of metal here. This one. Slide it back to the position it's in now, and it locks the mica sheets, the elements in place. So here's the ones that I have from previously, and it's hard to say which are good. They look worse. These ones look better, so let's just test the continuity on these ones. Bearing in mind that they're cold, not the continuity. They should have continuity. Well, they, they should if they're working. It's the resistance I'm talking about. So there's one for open circuit. Hundred and forty three point three on that one. And if I remember correctly, one was an end and one was a middle, so hundred and forty three, and this one will be hundred and thirteen. So I think one hundred and thirteen was the end one, one hundred and forty three was the middle, and it's got fewer windings on this side than on this well on that side of that one so the big debate about these things is that they're very expensive but people believe they're repairable which they are I've just explained to you quite quickly and it doesn't take much longer to do it how to check the elements how to how to um, replace the elements it's giving me a hundred and Not sure, sorry, I have my hands covering that, but it's giving me resistance, but it keeps flashing, which is weird. Yeah, I would say that they're the two broken ones, and it's just something loose inside you could if you wanted to pop the ends off these the tin ends 
use a regular toaster, sacrifice it to rewind the micas and put it back together. But, you know, because these things are expensive and that's going back to what I was saying. So the toaster is expensive and the replacement parts are available. And there's spurious elements, or spurious, but like aftermarket, non jewelet brand replacement elements that you can buy. Or you can buy the genuine ones, you can buy them from Jewelet. They make... They make the elements for them. This thing's just going off piste, look. What's really going on? Multimeter is just going a bit mental here. What is going on there? Let's check these again. Broken ones. Something a bit weird going on there. Yeah, no continuity on that one. Testing it on a metal surface is kind of silly, but... No continuity on that one. So there's something a bit fishy about this multimeter. I've had this multimeter a long time and I don't think I bought it new. So I'm kind of, I would like to invest in a better one. But they cost a fortune a good one. Or you can buy a really cheap one for 10 quid. And well, I don't know. I'm in between the two notions. Back to what I was talking about. 12 minutes into the video. Something can be repairable and not worth repairing. You can get the parts for something. And it's not worth putting it back together. It's not worth taking it apart, putting it back together. So a new toaster, the cheapest one you can buy in England, may cost six quid, eight quid, something like that in a shop. Supermarket normally, Amazon maybe, something like that. Six quid. So if this toaster costs 120, well, really, is anybody going to pay that much? Somebody might. Somebody has obviously bought them. Somebody keeps the company in business. Hotels like the big ones because they're robust. I'm not going to tighten all these until I've got them all in. And they like the big ones because they do eight slices. Kitchens, professional industrial kitchens and that kind of thing. They like them. And then the little ones are seen as being very good quality. So, ones like this, they... um. You know, they trade on their reputation and they put a little blacked out Union Jack flag, which I think is some kind of an insult to a flag, really, to make it in the wrong colour or not using the colour. Oops, it's a bit tight. And I don't know why... I'm just going to tighten these. Because they're going together nicely. I don't know why they had this one with the six sides that says Jewelet and the other ones don't say Jewelet. Maybe it's a... Some kind of a code. Maybe they just ran out of them. Maybe it's a spare part. Because I've seen them with different feet before. Right, where was I going? Waffling. Just waffling. If a second hand car has a resale value of a thousand quid and the parts to fix it, because it's blown an engine or whatever, it's twelve hundred quid. If you spend 1200 quid, the car will never be worth more than a thousand. So it's not worth fixing. Unless you somehow think it is. If you've got the money to burn or to spend, you're welcome to do that. Most people, when it comes down to toasters, kettles and smaller appliances, they don't get emotionally attached. Some will, some will think it's worth it. But if you can go out and buy a new toaster for, let's say not six quid, let's say a, a middling middle of the road toaster for 40 or 50 quid brand new in a box covered in that kind of soft flexible plastic maybe a bit of aero board or you can order these on amazon and they cost i don't know 30 quid to, rep to repair your two slice toaster maybe more 40 i don't remember what they were new toaster or spare parts spare parts you still haven't fixed it You've only got the parts delivered to your house or you've gone down to the repair shop to collect them. Is it worth it? Now, for me, I like fixing stuff. So there's a hobby factor. And it turns out, I've realised recently, you can justify spending any money on anything if it's a hobby. People make hot rods, they fix up cars and 
to spend a fortune on them and they'll never get the money back you see it all the time on unfinished projects on ebay and places like that the people have dumped a load of money into something their pride and joy and then realize that it's going to take another load of money to dump into it so somebody will pick it up for half of what they've spent on it get a bargain and get the pleasure of fixing someone else's cocked up project where does that leave us all they're very repairable and you can get all the parts and that's wonderful same as henry's and the henry's are actually a better deal because as far as i can see well they only have one function these guys do let's make toast henry's just suck but a henry you'll get a lot more work out of it day to day if you're in a commercial situation especially with a henry than you will ever get making toast although in a commercial situation you may make a lot of toast i'll stand i'll stand aside on that point actually i'm gonna slurp some tea It's nice when you can fix things and it's nice when you can get parts for them that six pound toaster if you can find parts for it you'll be it'd be it'll be cheaper and easier you'll never find parts for a six pound toaster cheaper than the toaster you'll never get a pair of elements for a toaster for less than six quid i'm happy to eat my words i'm sure there's somewhere in india that you can go down to a corner shop that sells toaster elements and buy them but not in the uk right now and not in any kind of normal repair world and that's the issue that the uk has and america has and most of the western world has at the moment is that you know something will just be thrown away this was sold at a car boot sale so somebody knew it had a value they didn't place the correct value on it as far as i'm concerned but i've wound up with a delightful toaster to complement my four slice <laughs> toaster this one's all kind of silver well it's brushed aluminium on the side polished aluminium and chromed steel i don't believe it is stainless although a magnet will tell me if it is I think it's just chromed yeah that magnet is sticking to it so chromed steel and brushed aluminium gives it that metal look industrial style i think they're great whether they're worth fixing or not as well you know if you spend 50 quid on elements you'll probably make your money back you might not get your time back i don't know what the resale market on these is like it's certainly I don't know, worth 50 quid maybe? 40 quid, something like that. I don't know, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'm, I don't really like selling things. I've said that before in videos. There's a whole hassle factor that comes with selling stuff. I would rather give it to a friend who knows that it's a used toaster and I'll make a video and tell you about it. I thought I was gonna to have to use some elements that I'd saved from another job to fix one of the elements in this, but as it stands, I'm pretty convinced that they're all working given that they were all hot. That is pretty much the acid test for toasters and heating elements. Right, waffle, almost 20 minutes of it. Is it worth fixing stuff? I believe it is. If you've got any questions or comments about Jewelit toasters, first things first, check out my other videos, which will be in a probably Jewelit toasters playlist down here or up here at the end of the video, or just search for Boots Own Jewelit. I fixed a few of them and I think they're really neat. And they're kind of, kind of, um, they're not really click together plasticky things. They're proper, you know, they're proper posi drive screws that anybody, anybody nowadays will have a screwdriver to take this apart. No torque screws, no safety screws, ready to go. I fixed a conveyor toaster once. That was quite a piece of machinery. Did I fix, yeah, something, one of the tabs was broken on the switch. That was, uh, that was another video of that. Right, that's 20 minutes of your life you're not gonna get back. Thanks for watching. See you later.